here again shows that. You can show the different advantages, or see, I'm sorry, see the different advantages on the left here uh, in the keep type production. Put some cut up uh, pallets in the pathways and put transplants on them. A lot of the crops actually in the bed in through here uh, between the transplants need little or no attention other than a casual watering through the dead of the winter. And without needing to go in and out other than harvesting, loading up with transplants allowed us to use an extremely high percent of the structure. On the right, you can see the complications of putting those transplants in the pathways. First, they're not covered at night with the uh, cover because the cover would only go down to the ground. And secondly, you have to step over them as you walk up and down through the beds. Some other advantages and scenarios for growing different crops. We grew a large number of tomatoes, as many of you do. And in these beds, the lateral bed and the, the uh, uh, key type bed as well offered an interesting opportunity. We have in the top left hand photo, you see uh, some of the, um, the interplanting with the tomatoes. And then we have in the bottom left, you see the transition to inner covers, or I'm sorry, transition to the uh, wire cages that we used for the cherry tomatoes. By using a two and a half foot cage, we were able to roll the inner covers over them. And then when we didn't need the inner covers, that second blanket in the greenhouse, we were able to attach what you see in the right hand picture, a full seven, a full five foot cage on top of the two and a half foot cage, uh, bringing us right up to some support wires. And we could grow the tomatoes right on from there. It allows, uh, allowed us to not have to, um, uh, or I'm sure I uh, should say it allowed us to use that inner cover very effectively to get those transplants up and going. And when we didn't need it, we could move right on quickly to, to a warmer season production. Same sort of thing with slicer tomatoes and single liters. Uh, where we used the strings going up over the support wires to get them started. Once we didn't need the inner cover anymore, it was pushed back and the strings were taken up to a higher trellis. Cucumber production, little trick to make an A-frame and put the vines on top of that to allow you to work in a, and concentrate production in a small area, maximizing yield by plant numbers and still have quality fruit that wasn't always sitting on the ground. Easy to pick, easy to clean under, easy for pest management. So let's look at some quick construction details. There's a, in a five foot wide bed, it used a black polyethylene water pipe with a little piece of rebar that went into the ground to connect it into there. Again, the one inch thick insulated pathway on the lower uh, left. And then the inner cover of whatever material you choose to use, for me it really became predominantly uh, waste plastic off of uh, the used plastic off of the high tunnels. And in this slide it's shown folded back. A little bit more complicated to make, but had a couple of interesting features. Uh, this is the interior of the key type bed with the pathways you can walk uh, in and out over here to get in and out of the and do your work, watering, etc. We needed a back support brace, and you can see it was simply made out of a two by four. Here's a notch cut in for the bows and a a uh, carriage bolt was put right through the bowl, uh, bow and the 2x4 to hold it in place. A hole was drilled right over in here in the 2x4. A standard piece of thin wall metallic tubing that was bent to the shapes you see on the left. Right bent in our shop with a simple uh, mechanical uh, pipe bender that you can get or conduit bender for 50 to $70. 
what we added in here right in the top, it isn't quite visible here, is a broad-headed roofing nail. And we drilled down through the 2x4 and into the uh, thin wall metallic tubing and down into the 2x4 again, inserted that um, heavy-headed uh, roofing nail, and we could use a, pair of, a jackknife or a screwdriver, pull out that nail and slide out the entire uh, assembly that the for the uh, cover rolled on if we wanted to remove that for summer production and to make the greenhouse cleaner to work in uh, during the uh, spring and, and fall production with high groups of tomatoes and so forth like that. A couple things we found interesting to use. Uh, simple roll-up PVC inner covers. On the right, you'll you see a one-inch cover on a one-inch Schedule 40 PVC pipe that's cover cut with a little more uh, than half of its surface area, and it can you can see how it can snap onto a three-quarter inch Schedule 40 PVC and hold the plastic in place using this little uh, handle right here, you can see a, a bolt right in here and a hole right in here of the middle picture and that handle moves in and out. I found that if I had attached it permanently, I'd always bump against it and by being able to take it in and out, it allowed for uh, much easier working in the greenhouse. So what is the cost of an inner cover? Um, really, when you look at how much more productivity, and that includes earlier startup time for things like tomatoes, peppers, strawberries, and in a longer growing season, the, you really start seeing how when you cost out a high tunnel at 2 to $4 per square foot, um, depending on a number of factors. And then you look at the cost of an inner tunnel at 10 to 45 cents a square foot. What you gain for a 10 percent increase in the, the total cost of the high tunnel system is per, pretty minimal compared to what you can benefit from. So uh, my conclusion over the years has been that inner covers are well worth the cost and uh, in so many ways. I'm going to switch over now and we're going to ask uh, Natalie to present her information that she's been uh, working on at OSU. Uh, good afternoon. Can everybody hear me? All right, I see some check marks. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, begin with the presentation. I want to uh, thank Steve very much for giving me the opportunity to present to you today. Um, I'm a grad student working out of uh, Worcester, Ohio right now. So I'll just tell you to begin with that uh, I am not the one with all the answers. In fact, right now at this time in uh, my career, I'm really focusing on answering questions, on asking the right questions. So, um, so I just want to show you a little snippet of my research and explain to you what I found and some of the interesting results from working with high tunnels and then low tunnels within them. So as I began my research, what I really wanted to do was manage microclimates and horticultural growing systems in a way that increased crop uh, biomass, but also nutrient concentration. Uh, so my plan was just to grow leafy vegetables under different microclimates in early spring and late fall and monitor the crop environment that I created around them and what the yield and the quality of those vegetables were. So this is in uh, Midwestern uh, U.S., uh, Northeastern Ohio. So just to give you a little brief description of what my experimental design were, I was growing in the spring and fall. Of course, the goal would be to produce year-round, but uh, for me as a student, I, I couldn't be uh, responsible for a crop uh, 
for an entire year, the data collection just got overwhelming. So I focused on mid-March to mid-April and early October to early November to extend uh, the growing season in leafy crops. And I grew lettuce. So this has been the last two or three years of work. I grew in high tunnels uh, and in the field. These were uh, single layer, uh, six mil Gothic style high tunnels, 30 by 80 feet. And so I'll definitely focus on the information that I uh, gained from the high tunnel. Uh, and inside these high tunnels, I created four different microclimates with the addition of uh, both root and uh, shoot zone microclimate uh, modifications. So these pictures just give you a little bit of an idea of the construction. I was using uh, primarily peat uh, compost media mixture, and I was growing in wooden raised beds. Some of them were equipped with electric heating cables to create some uh, increases in root zone temperature. Now, for me, I used electric because it was an experimental system. But I realized that when we talk about uh, transferring these types of concepts to production systems, probably something like a hot water heating would be more efficient. Uh, and some of these raised beds were covered with a low tunnel. I just uh, used a 0.8 mil uh, slitted low tunnel, and then they were within my high tunnel. So first, I just want to uh, present to you some of the temperature data that I gathered over these uh, different seasons. Now, this graph that you're looking at right now is actually uh, the outdoor temperatures. But I just want to acquaint you with the graph. So um, what we're describing here are heat units. So these are growing degree days. And because I was growing lettuce, I used a, a 5 degree uh, base, or a 40 degree Fahrenheit, 5 degrees Celsius. And then um, for those month long uh, seasons, I just added up um, my growing degree days. So the brown represents soil. The blue represents uh, air temperature. And these are the types of temperatures that I could obtain outdoors. And here is what I can obtain um, growing in our, in our high tunnel. So we instantly see what we all know is the uh, drastic benefit of growing in a high tunnel when um, we're dealing with the edges of seasons. And what I want to uh, point out here is that in our air temperature uh, bars, we see what the addition of an extra layer of plastic uh, can do from the cumulative growing degree days here, we see an increase here with just uh, one layer of plastic. So those were the 2009 temperatures in a high tunnel. And then when we go to 2010, we see that the trends are very similar. But overall, the total heat units that we gained were lower. And so these are obviously, um, there are a couple of reasons that feed into this. Uh, 2010 was a challenging season for uh, me here in Ohio. But um, the main reason that we see uh, smaller impacts of this additional layer of plastic is because I had some uh, rhizotonia in my plots, and I was trying to ventilate um, as much as I possibly could to maintain air movement in my crops. And so I uh, decreased the impact of that second layer of plastic because of how much air I was trying to get to move through my high tunnel.